Hello everyone, I'm Jim Larson and this is another installment of my Stirling Engine Design Talks. I like to design and build Stirling engines and then I often will print up the plans and make them available for people to build and modify their own. So we're going to look today at the walking beam Stirling engines. Now, they're, the plans for this walking beam engine right here are in the book of 11 Stirling engine projects that you can build. And I'll show you just briefly a little bit about what's in there. Um, the book covers this engine and 10 other projects with detailed pictures about all the parts and how you build them and uh, how it goes together with some real good instruction on uh, dimensions and, and all where to find the pieces and parts. So if you're the type of person who needs a lot of detail and appreciates guidance for putting things together, then maybe the book is the, the way that you would like to go. And if you're the kind of person who likes to tinker and design their own, I'm going to talk you through the process that I went through to design these two engines. These two engines are built on the same basic geometry. Uh, so the, the ratios in the beam and the, the, the drive mechanisms on both engines are following the same pattern. One of the things that makes the, the walking beam engine unique is this, this mechanical motion that it has as it's running. And with this particular engine, I needed a stroke on this piston that was different from the stroke that lifts and drops the displacer inside the pressure chamber. So we create that difference with these distances here. You can see that this distance is longer than this distance. And what that does is that effectively makes this travel less than this does. And so those ratios are in the book so that they can help you with that. It uses a, a balloon diaphragm for drive. And I'll see if I can get this running for us. And Now this is a liquid wax candle. The, it's like you get at a restaurant supply store. Um, it takes just a few seconds to get the engine warm enough. It's not a self-starting engine, so you do have to give it a push to get it started. It's going to take a little while to get going. The liquid wax candles are not real warm. Not like the alcohol lamp that's on this motor over here. But they will make it run, and as, as you let it go, it will get faster. Now we'll talk about what's happening here in the Stirling engine. This pressure chamber has captive air inside of it. The, the air that's in here can't get out. And this piston that's moving up and down inside is moving the air around. So when the piston comes up, the air has to go down and that's where the heat is. When the air gets down on the bottom, it expands and pushes out on the diaphragm. As the engine continues to rotate, the piston goes down inside and it pushes the air up. When it gets up on the top, it, it, it contracts because it cools. It draws in on the drive diaphragm. So what that means is with this type of Stirling engine, there's actually two power strokes per cycle. So it's it's getting power both on the push and on the pull. So in every rotation, there's two power strokes. These, this engine is designed so that the top half is intentionally larger than the bottom half. And that's because this engine is designed to be air cooled. A lot of Stirling engines that are made out of soda cans require that you put ice on them. In fact, if you've built my quick and easy Stirling engine, it it uses ice on the cool side of the engine. But this one is air cooled and in order to make that air cooling effective, I made the cooling side larger than the heating side. 
because the heat has to get out of the engine at least as fast and as effectively as it goes into the engine. If it can go into the engine faster than it can get out, that heat builds up inside, eventually the engine would overheat and stop. Now the top eventually does get warm and it's warm to touch now, but that's because the heat is leaving through that top. It's radiating out through this top. So as the heat is passing through the motor, it's creating that motion. Now something else that makes this engine unique, especially in the small home-built arena, is this thermal break that's in the middle. So you see these pieces of plywood, there's actually a thermal barrier between the hot side and the cold side. That's to prevent heat from just running up through the aluminum from the flame to the cool side. If we want this to work effectively as an air-cooled motor, we need to be able to keep the stray heat from going up through the sides of the engine. So that's what this that's what this plywood barrier is for. There's actually a, a gasket in between there that has some good insulated qualities. There's only one pin on the flywheel for the crankshaft and that's part of the appeal for these walking beam engines is the simplicity of them and there's some romance in seeing the, the mechanics of it rock back and forth as it runs. So I'm going to um, shut this one off and move on to the fancy one, the rolling rock engine. So you see this one, it tends to, to calm right down when you take the power off. So I call this the rolling rock sterling engine simply because it's made with a rolling rock can instead of a soda can. And this other device over here on the side is a music box. And as I said before, this was built with the same basic geometry as the other engine that we just ran. The difference being that first engine was engineered to make it easy to build. And so that's why you notice lots of square parts and straight edges. Um, and it's not overly fancy. So I wanted to see what would it be like if we just made it all nice and fancy with lots of brass and fancy wood and turned pieces. And so I went out to the wood lathe and I, I replaced that, that thermal barrier with um, some nice hard wood and used brass screws and rod to put the whole thing together. And then I turned the flywheel and did some cutouts in there. And the the rolling rock can is a larger can. The soda cans are 12 ounce cans. Uh, this is a 16 ounce can. And the bottom side is about the same size as in the smaller version, but the, the cooling is much more effective here. I made a copper plate for the top. Copper is a wonderful conductor, and so that helps the heat get out a little bit faster. And then the brass pieces um, were came from the, the some of them came from the hardware store, some of them came from the modeling shop. The the gold coins up here are just gold plated dollars, uh, U.S. dollars, and uh, so there's a three dollar counterweight there. And this one is going to be running on an alcohol lamp. It'll also run on the liquid wax candles. But the alcohol burns hotter, and so we get a little better performance out of it, especially when we want to get some work done. So it's a, it's a little faster starting. It's built with a little more precision than the other engine was. The main bearing here is made out of the ultra-high uh, molecular density polyurethane. It's just a chunk of plastic basically, that's had a hole drilled through it, but it's very slippery plastic. And uh, so the, the bearing is a, turns a little bit freer, and with that hotter flame and the larger cooling area, you can see this engine turns a little bit faster. Now, the flywheel's a little heavier, because um, the other one's just two CDs, and this is, a, this is considerably heavier 
than the other one, which means it's, it's going to turn slower with the same amount of heat, but it's going to have more torque because of that. So let's see if we're going long enough here that we can have enough torque to turn the, the music box on. Getting slow. I think it's interesting when there's a lot of notes that the music box has to play, it creates more drag and slows the motor down. And then when there's a pause between notes, the motor gets to speed up because it's, uh, it takes some of the load off. So I, I built a little music box attachment because one of the questions I would frequently get was, but does it do anything? What can you get these engines to do? Um, so I made one that does something. And so what it's doing here, and the reason it's running so fast is just like the other one, the bottom side is getting hot. We have a barrier that's preventing that heat from coming up through the outside of the engine. So it, it has to go through the engine if it's to cool down. And then this is the cooling section and it's getting warm to touch. So that air moving up and down in there is transferring a lot of heat from the bottom of the engine to the top of the engine. As that air is moving up and down, it moves down and expands and pushes out on the drive diaphragm. And then as the air comes up to the top, it cools and contracts, it draws in on the drive diaphragm, and that repeating motion keeps the flywheel spinning. The counterbalance is to balance the weight of the displacer over here. So these are um, keeping the motor in balance. If these counterweights were not here, then the length of this arm with the displacer on the end of it would make the motor run unevenly. Now this one, when we take the heat away, it's going to run a little bit longer because it's a more effective uh, engine and also it's running hotter right now. I have noticed that the, the balloon diaphragms only last me about a year and then you have to replace them. It costs you about 10 cents and takes about 10 minutes to do. Um, a lot of people attach their diaphragm to their drive line with a screw. I don't like that method because it pokes a hole in there and has a potential pressure leak. So I've always just glued mine on and so I just have a little loop in the end of the wire and then it's glued to the balloon. It's with super glue, it works really quickly. Super glue sticks to the latex balloon very well. So that book again is 11 Sterling Engine Projects That You Can Build by Jim R. Larson. You'll find it on Amazon in the United States and in Amazon markets around the world. If you build a Sterling engine out of this book, uh, please contact me and let me know about it and I will make sure you're in the Hall of Fame on sterlingbuilder.com. Thank you very much.